Well, so first of all, I'd say that the reason it's taking place is, number one, markets are really trying, struggling to price the risk of a trade war. Uh, they're trying to decide, do we focus on simply the short-term costs that have to do with tariffs and, you know, potentially that's manageable? Uh, or do we focus on the broader implications of a breakdown in a relationship between the two largest economies in the world? Um, and then the fact is that the market data, the, the economic data in the United States is mixed. You know, there's some good numbers out there, there's some bad numbers out there, and you know, you can tell a story about the economy getting stronger or weaker. Uh, What's your do, story? Is the economy getting stronger or weaker? You know, it, it, in the short run, I think that uh, the, the, the market has softened. I mean, sorry, the economy has softened. Um, that you can't ignore that fact. You can't ignore the fact that there's an, you know, a partially inverted yield curve, which usually signals at least concerns about growth. But to answer your question about how do you invest in this environment, you look long term. Um, and we always look long term. But, but, you know, we're not trying to guess uh, the ups and downs yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. We're also not trying to guess when the cycle ends. What we're, what we're looking at is which kind of assets are underpriced or overpriced. Yeah. And interestingly enough, as concerned as we might be, the equity risk premium right now is still at 5.6 percent. That suggests that in the long term, equity yeah. risk will be rewarded. Yeah, and, and I, I gave a speech a couple weeks ago where I made the case for stocks, not because I'm wildly bullish, but because there's 30 million more millennials than my generation, and the number of stocks has gone down by half. Yeah. And, Publicly and, traded names. So there's fewer stocks being bought by more people. I mean, that's the ultimate long-term bull case. But in the next year or two, with trade fights and Brexit, how do we protect ourselves? So here's the thing. So, so that's being... That, that fear, that concern is being priced into the market right now. As high as stocks might be, and they're at all-time highs, the, relative to the return that you'll get from safe harbors, there's still this very big reward that you get for taking equity risk. So the question as an investor is, how exposed do you want to be? Um, if you're worried about where you're going to be a year from now mm -hmm. or two years from now, you might have so to. Where, where do you, you, you might have to take some money off the table, but it's going to be very costly to do so. If you are a long-term investor and you're willing to say, you know what, if if a year from now stocks are down 30 percent, I can accept that because yeah. I'm I know that they'll be up uh, five years from now. Well, actually, you're in a position to earn but higher than average returns. Your real job is to find stuff now that is cheaper than what it will be in a number of years. What looks inexpensive to you, then, Patrick? So, so for for us, actually, I would say that that you know that 5.6 percent risk premium suggests, actually, if you look back in history, that stocks should outperform o over the next uh, five, four to five years. Um, Again, you've got to balance that, and that's the key thing for, for every investor is they've got to know what their risk appetite right now yeah. is. And, and, you know, if you don't want to be taking risks that you can't afford in this kind of market, because I do think that volatility uh, is, is going to be greater, and, I also, and, and not just volatility, but it's possible that we could be looking at the end of the cycle coming up. I mean, it, it, wouldn't, be, yeah. it wouldn't be a stretch to say that after 10 years of recovery that, that you know, a softer economy might mean that.